The topic that we are going to talk about today is essential in our daily lives. It allows us to operate machines and appliances that help us perform our tasks easier. It helps us in many ways, but it can be dangerous as well. Do you have an idea what this is? We call it electricity. For today's lesson, we are going to discuss about the various sources of electricity. Are you ready to join me in today's lesson? Come on! Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of our Scientific Friday. I am Teacher Janelle and I'm on a journey to understand the different things around us. Are you ready to learn with me? Let's go! Let me show you some pictures. Are you familiar with this? Or have you seen some of these somewhere? For today's lesson, we will explore about the various sources of electricity. In this topic, we will learn about the following. What are the sources of electricity? How can electricity be generated? And how can electricity be transmitted and distributed? Electricity is a basic part of nature, and it is one of our most widely used forms of energy. It is the flow of electrical power or charge, a secondary energy source, which means that we can get it from the conversion of other energy sources like coal, natural gas, oil, nuclear power, and other natural sources. This means that electricity comes from primary sources of energy. The energy sources we use to make electricity can be renewable or non-renewable. But electricity itself is neither renewable nor non-renewable. Are you familiar with a generator? A generator is a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. The process is based on the relationship between magnetism and electricity. It was discovered that when a magnet is moved inside a coil of wire, electrical current flows in the wire. A typical generator of a power plant uses an electromagnet. It is a magnet produced by electricity but not a traditional magnet. The generator has a series of insulated coils of wire that form a stationary cylinder. An electric utility power station uses either a turbine, engine, water wheel, or other similar machines to drive an electric generator or a device that converts mechanical energy or chemical energy to generate electricity. Steam turbines, internal combustion engines, Gas combustion turbines, water turbines, and wind turbines are the most common methods to generate electricity. In a fossil-fueled steam turbine, the fuel is burned in a furnace to heat water in a boiler to produce steam. Coal, petroleum or oil, and natural gas are burned in large furnaces to heat water to make steam that in turn pushes on the blades of a turbine. The next source is nuclear power. It is a method in which steam is produced by heating water through a process called nuclear fission. The heat is used to turn water into steam, which in turn spins a turbine that generates electricity. Then there is what we call hydropower. It is a process in which flowing water is used to spin a turbine connected to a generator. There are two basic types of hydroelectric systems that produce electricity. In the first system, flowing water accumulates in reservoirs created by the use of dams. The water falls through a pipe called penstock and applies pressure against the turbine blades to drive the generator to produce electricity. The second system is called runoff river. The force of the river current rather than falling water applies pressure to the turbine blades to produce electricity. 
Another source is geothermal power. It comes from the heat energy buried beneath the surface of the earth. In some areas of the country, enough heat rises close to the surface of the earth to heat underground water into steam, which can be tapped for use at steam turbine plants. Next is solar power. It is derived from the energy of the sun. However, the sun's energy is not available full-time and it is widely scattered. The processes used to produce electricity using the sun's energy have historically been more expensive than using conventional fossil fuels. Lastly, wind power is derived from the conversion of the energy contained in wind into electricity. A wind turbine is similar to a typical windmill. Now that we know the sources of electrical energy and how it is generated, let us now know how it is transmitted and distributed to our houses, schools, and other places. Transmission and distribution refer to the different stages of carrying electricity over poles and wires from generators to a house or a business. The primary distinction between the two is the voltage level at which electricity moves in each stage. After electricity has been generated, a system of electrical wires carries the electricity from the source of generation to our homes and businesses. These lines can be found overhead or sometimes in the ground, and combined transmission and distribution lines make up what is commonly called the grid. Transmission and distribution are two separate stages or systems on the grid. Transmission is the interstate highway of electricity delivery. It refers to the part of electricity delivery that moves bulk electricity from the generation sites over long distances to substations closer to areas of demand for electricity. Consumers may recognize transmission lines as the larger, taller poles or towers carrying many wires over long distances. Transmission lines move large amounts of power at a high voltage level, a level that is too much to be delivered directly to a home or a business. Transmission lines, transformers, substations, and other equipment have voltages of 100,000 volts and above. In most cases, the power moving through the transmission system must be reduced to lower voltage levels by electricity distributors before it can be delivered to a residence or business. Power, specifically the voltage level, sent through transmission lines is reduced or stepped down via transformers and sent through distribution lines, which are then connected to homes and businesses. If transmission is the interstate highway of the grid, distribution is the city street. It is the last leg of the delivery of electrical power from generation to the consumer. Power travels on the distribution system at a voltage level that can be delivered directly to a home or business. Distribution lines are the lines that many people see along the street. Distribution is the power that turns on and runs the appliances we use every day to keep our food fresh, our clothes clean, and our homes either cool or warm. Here in the Philippines, the standard voltage is 220 volts and the standard frequency is 60 hertz. Now, try checking your current electric bill and see the detailed specifics of the breakdown of your bill and the charges. You can also compare it to your previous bills and see the difference of your power consumption every month. Despite of its great importance in our daily lives, most of us rarely stop to think about of what life would be like without electricity. Yet, like air and water, we tend to take electricity for granted. Every day, we use electricity to perform many jobs for us, from lighting, to heating or cooling our homes, to powering our televisions and computers. 
electricity is a controllable and convenient form of energy that is used in the applications of heat, light, and power. And that's it for our discussion today. I hope you learned a lot and apply these learnings in your daily lives. Join me again for our next Scientific Friday and together, let us discover things around us. Because science is everywhere! This has been Teacher Janelle for Teacher Vibal. Goodbye everyone! Thank you.